let your word flow. Let lives change. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sit down. I must express my joy and happiness to be given the privilege to stand to conclude the camp section, the camp meeting 2022. It's actually an honor. Dr. David Abueli is both a father, a mentor, and a friend for a long time now, and a senior brother, and I am so honored. And all the pastors of Dominion City, I love you all. God bless you. Because I know the time is fast spent, just give me a little time. I'll be as brief as brevity can be. I am a preacher, but I will take it slowly tonight. I'll be slow, but not sluggish, so that I'll be able to keep my time. Tonight, the little topic I will share with you is simply titled Transfer of Spiritual Property. Enable language on FFA. Hallelujah. And um, I want to begin by introducing to you what the definition of that topic could actually mean. First of all, I want to say that property is something that is transferred from parents to their children. Property can be defined as something of value that is owned, which is either given, bestowed, acquired, or inherited from somebody's parents. The exclusive right of possessing, enjoying, or disposing a thing, anything you are able to acquire to belong to you, that is what you call property. Now, when parents are about to die, they write will and transfer their properties to their children. And um, people also sometimes struggle why their father is still alive over the man's property. Sometimes they go to court, sometimes people fight over existing land. But then, beyond physical property, there is also spiritual property. You know, what eyes can see are temporal. What eyes cannot see are eternal. So physical things cannot be called eternal things. But there are spiritual things that when they are transferred upon somebody, it, will create, it becomes a world creator. It becomes a magnetic field that magnets every good thing towards you. And then again, there, is, there are a few things you must know about spiritual property beyond the physical. Number one is that spiritual property is an intangible world that produces tangible results. Something you cannot see with your eyes, but they are superior to silver and gold. The man they called Peter at the beautiful gate saw a man begging, the crippled man. He said to him, silver and gold I do not have, but there is something I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise and begin to walk. And the man rose and began to walk. No amount of dollar, no amount of yen or pounds or euro can buy that man's two leg. But by something beyond money, the two legs were restored. And I pray tonight that something will jump on you that will transform your environment completely and change your story and change the history of your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, spiritual property is a spiritual energy that enables a man beyond a man's natural ability, being able to do what you couldn't have been able to do ordinarily. David brought down Goliath, certainly not by energy, but by something beyond physical strength. Number three, the spiritual property can be defined as master key to open every door of destiny. Every door at the command of anointing, every door will be opened. And then number four it is a divine investment that commands the attention of kings and the queens of this world. When you carry certain presence, anywhere you enter, men are attracted to you. Men will run to help you. Nations will assist you. And it shall be your portion from today in the name of Jesus Christ. And number five, it is supernatural flavor upon a man's life, guaranteeing divine acceptability, divine likability, divine attractability, 
and divine personality. When this aura comes upon a man's life, as he moves, men accept him, heaven accepts him, even enemies will like him. For when a man's way pleases God, even your enemies shall be at peace with you. Eight things you must know about this transfer and how they happen. Number one is that for spiritual things to transfer or even physical properties to transfer, once you call it property owned by a man, whether it is spiritual or physical, for it to be transferred, first of all, it must go from a man's father to his family members or his children. You don't enter any man's family and claim his house. And no man at writing of his will gives larger portion to others who are not members of his family. So it is a transfer that happens between a father and his children. Physically or spiritually. And then number three, bear this in mind. Every father, number two, every father on earth has some properties to transfer. Even if it is a spoke of bicycle, it's a property. Every man that is called a father has got something to give to the children. Anybody you look up to and call him your father has got something to give you physically and spiritually because every man is a combination of his ancestors. And the number three, fathers have prophetic oversight over you. Whether you believe it or not, your fathers have some prophetic oversight over your life, whether they are spiritual father or physical father or otherwise. And then hear this one, number four. There are things God can do, can give to you. And there are things God can no more give to you. God has given it to somebody who is either your physical father or spiritual father to impact it in your life. Without which, you cannot have it. That was why even Jesus Christ, when he came here, has submitted himself to John. And John was saying, no, I am the one that you should baptize. He said, no. Let it be so for now to fulfill all righteousness. And then, number five, take this. Fathers give feathers to children to fly. So no father, no feather, no feather, no flying. Fathers give shoulder to children to climb so that you can grow taller. No father, no shoulder, no shoulder, no heights. And then number seven, that is a place of authority in fatherhood. Write this one down. There is a place of authority in fatherhood. That no matter how you are strong, no matter how strong you are, no matter how intelligent you are, there are things only fathers can give to their children. Hello? Are you, are you following what I'm saying here? And it must only happen by connectivity. Not by proximity. Now, if we go further a little bit, because I just want to give you some summary of some of, uh, of things I wanted to put across to you this night. Let us now define fatherhood. Who is a father to a man? Or who is a spiritual father? Or physical father? Or any other kind of father? First of all, who is a father? The word father came from a word ab. And that word ab means patal. All right, it also means progenitor, it means originator or origin, it means supplier and source, life giver and provider, protector. That is father. And there are few things you must know when a man brings, if a man is your father who brought you into this world, even if he's a cripple man, he's your father, even if he's a madman, he's your father. Even if it's a crazy man, it's your father. Once it's your father, it's your father. You can't change that reality. If you go to hospital for DNA tests, if a man is your father, it's your father. There are things you can't change on earth. There are things you have no power over. You have to allow them function the way God has created them. So, you can do nothing against your father. Rather, for your father. And number two, you can never succeed in fighting your father. Rather, when you fight your father, you are fighting God indirectly. And the number three is that you cannot successfully fight against 
an established authority. And your father is an established authority. And then number four, that any attempt to fight an authority makes you a rebel. Anytime a man is making an attempt to fight authority, you become a rebel immediately. And then authority is given, it is not taken. Nobody wakes up. For instance, I have a church I pastor. Nobody comes to my church. I couldn't have been here anyway, except I was authorized. Yeah, there was no way I could have been here. Even if I have all the things I need to say, I will sit down there. I can't come up here until I am given the microphone to preach. Are you following what I'm saying here? Even if I know more than everybody here, it is nonsense without authority. So power is useless without authority. And that's why you must understand that if God has made a man your father, even if you, know, you have gone to university and got your PhD, he is still your father. You can't change it. Fighting him therefore is making fool of yourself. And then hear this one. It's only a man under authority that can have authority. If you see a girl that you want to marry and you like the girl so much, Oh, thank God about that you love. God has been spoken to you. God called you. Chinedu, Nedu, 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 Nedu. Ngozi, Ngozi is your wife, your wife, your wife. You had it clear. <laughs> but you cannot take that girl home until certain rights are performed. If you take her home, you are a kidnapper. You kidnap somebody's daughter. Are you following what I'm saying here at all? And it may be a very small team on the altar. Will you take this woman? Yes, I do. Will you take this man? Yes, I do. I therefore declare you man and day. It becomes legal just like that. Authority is given. It is not taken. Hello? So if it's not given to you, you don't have it. And hear this now. That man said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one man, go, he goes. And that one comes, he comes. By implication, in this church called Dominion City today, there is one set man. God has given all the appointments and every grace. He is the father of the church. And his name is Reverend Dr. David Obwele. If he, hear me, even if he asked you, in fact, there was a year he asked me to come that I would preach something in the camp. I came, sat down in the camp for four days and went home without saying hello. Hello? That is, are you following what I say here? The authority in the house. He didn't feel like anymore, anyway. Or maybe activities were so much. He didn't even, even say sorry to me. He didn't even remember. But I was going to say, okay, I will see you later. And that's it. Hello? <laughs> If you get angry, you are angry for nothing. <laughs> Hello? You don't fight authority. Submit yourself to... Then you have authority. Somebody shout amen two times. Are you following what I'm saying here? That's the way it is. And I've always said this. Let me repeat again. Let me repeat it this way. If I become angry now, as Anglican priest, and say I am angry with my bishop, I am angry because of the way I'm treated. I will no more be an Anglican priest. Let me go and open my own shop somewhere. Hello? Then I move out and find a warehouse and call it Jesus Intercontinental Communication Ministries International. Aka, the last bus stop. Osibo Osibo Ministry. I have dug my own pit where I will be buried. Do you know why? I am moving away from authority to lose the covering of authority. To remain naked in my whole life. Are you following what I'm saying here at all? I may start it and it will boom. Giddy, 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 for one year, two years, three years, four years. One day, you will look for it. You will see nothing again. Because authority is given. Come on, am I making a point somebody here at all? Therefore, it is more important. It is better. To be an elephant leg than to be a mosquito head. Because some of you will still rise up tomorrow and say that God has called you. Meanwhile, you only had the voice of God calling you in Ketchi. In Ketchi, I will use you. You didn't ask him, use me where? How? 
you went out and opened in Kitchi, God has called you Ministry International. You will die with it. <laughs> Only God will help you. God will help you. Somebody say, God help me. And there is one, one major focus. Get the world turned to Jesus. That's all. How you get it done is how God leads you. Jesus Christ says, what I see my father do, that I also do. That means if he doesn't do it, I will not do it. But he said, God has given me a separate ministry. Let God talk to your father in the Lord. He will release you. Take your Bible, you will discover this. That all the days Moses was alive, God never spoke to Joshua for one day. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. All the days Elijah was alive, God never spoke to Elijah for one day. God does not miss that. He doesn't bypass authority. He understands authority. Are you following what I'm saying here? It was when Moses died that God said, Joshua, wake up. Be courageous. Carry them on. Without the death of Moses, Joshua will have remained a servant serving Moses. And that's a ministry. That's a good ministry. Shout amen. Let me hear you. Shout a big amen. And if you don't know what fathers can do for sons, a son to a father becomes a friend to his father's friends. That's the way it happens. There are seven kinds of fathers. I'll mention the seven of them. Just to mention them, I'll be out of your way. Number one is what I call the heavenly father. The father almighty who lives in heaven. Our father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Number two is biological father. The man who gave birth to you, whether he's a fool or a wise man, is a moron and imbecile, is your father. And then number three is a technical father. Any man as a lawyer, as a doctor, as a businessman, you are sent to serve as one boy or in any form. You are serving like lawyers will serve another lawyer to become a well-established lawyer. Are you with me at all? A mechanic, we go to learn mechanic um, work under under mechanic. Any man that taught you, any man that you stayed under, to taught you to learn ministry, to learn anything, is called a technical father. And the number four is substitute father. This is if your father has died, you can choose your uncle to be your father. If your father is no more alive, whether spiritual or physical, someone else who plays a parenting role or fatherly role in your life can be chosen to be your father. And then number five is your spiritual father. Is a man who got you born again. The man that preached to you and you gave your life to Christ. In most cases, you may be one uh, that nobody preached to. Like myself, I was in my room. Jesus walked in and got me born again. So I may not say I have somebody who preached to me to get born again. But many of us, have the privilege of having somebody who got them saved. Then again is number six, prophetic father. A man that God has sent you under to pastor you. The man who pastors you. The man who feeds you. Who is spiritual understanding and knowledge is a father to you. Any man that discipled you to bring you up to the level you are operating now has made an impact, an inroad in your life. You don't look down on him. And then again, your father-in-law. If you marry the woman, the father to that your wife is also your father. So if you buy one suit for your father, one you want to buy the suit, buy two. One for your father, one for your father. If you want to buy a car for your father, remember to buy a car too for your father because both of them are fathers. Hello? Are we together here? All right. Now, in the book of 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15, Paul said this. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15, Paul said something very important. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye no many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timothy, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of all my ways with me in Christ, as I teach everywhere in all the churches. Paul was putting a stamp here. He was saying something that is so emphatical. 
It says, listen to me, all you church of Corinth. You may have several instructors. You may be watching televisions in your house. Listening to many preachers who preach on television. And they preach wonderfully. But don't forget that all of the things they preach are all wonderful. But I am your father. For I've begotten I've gotten you in Christ Jesus. You know, many of you who hear my voice now, because of the use of social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, and all of these things, many preachers are now your fathers. Are you following what I'm saying here at all? You now listen to everything you see, everybody who preaches. Today, just today, this afternoon, I was coming from Monitor. A woman was saying, a woman saw who? Saying something like this. He was there when the woman was saying that. That a preacher was preaching somewhere. And she had the preacher say something like that Jesus was ugly. That the Bible said that Jesus was an ugly man. And that he too is an ugly man. He was talking about himself now. And then he said again that Jesus borrowed everything he used. He borrowed a donkey. He borrowed a canoe. I mean, um, whether it's canoe or sheep. He was a borrower. And but pastors are trying to be rich. Whereas their master borrowed. And you call him your master. And that woman took that thing to be a powerful message. That this man has, the man, the man dealt with her. Thank God she said it to my hearing. I said, sir, madam, Jesus was not ugly at all. <laughs> Hello? And then number two, he was never a borrower at all. He never borrowed anything. When he sent them to go and get a horse, he said to them, when you move up there, you will see a horse tied by my father in heaven. Untie the horse. If any man says oath to you, tell them the master needs it. Does the master borrow? Are we together here at all? In fact, it's a privilege for Jesus to use your thing. You didn't hear what I said. It's a privilege for Jesus after climbing on Peter's boat. What did he do? Peter, drop your net. And all the fishes began to run on your mask. Get ready, said, go. Home and abroad meeting. Where? The man began to pull the net. Could he pull the, the net? No. So who did favor to the other? Peter or Jesus? But the woman believed it that way. That's not a very big deal, but he believed it. Then some of the times, another person was telling me one day that he was listening to television on Sunday and the man of God was saying that once you are saved, you are forever saved. Men and brethren, that thing is dicey. It is both false and sounds like truth. And of course, you know, the tiny line between heresy and the, the truth of the gospel is very tiny. The margin is so tiny. That's why it's called heresy. Heresy simply means emphasizing a truth at the expense of the balance. And if you don't take time, because sometimes the man you are hearing on television may be preaching on love, and you only heard him preach part one, you didn't hear him preach part two. And you grab part one and run. That's why you need to ignore anybody you hear on television. Focus in the church where God has placed you. Let the father who feed you be the father who feed you. Are you somebody here that I'm saying here? Don't get confused. It's a taboo. God says to plant two seeds in one field. Abomination to the Lord. Don't hear from that man and hear from another man. And hear from here and there and get confused. And one day you will come back to your house and pour water in a basin and pour oil on it and pour honey on it and begin to pray. All my enemies die by because you had it somewhere on television. And People, are, people easily get swayed away because we have short span of memory. So men and brethren, I want to encourage you. Don't be a visitor in your church. Be planted in the house. Be like a tree planted by the still water so it can bear fruit in your life. Somebody here don't want to say him. You have only one father. If God has brought you under that father, if it is God who did it, the men and brethren remain. For my own sheep hears my voice. And no one comes to me except my father draws them. Because social media is now very confusing. We hear all kinds of things. In fact, somebody was telling a lady that um, 
The Bible says that he that break a virgin will put her to marriage. And it's in the Bible. And the girl allowed him to break her so he can put her to marriage. God, the Bible said so. All kinds of things that we hear. Hello? I've heard somebody who was preaching on television that going to hospital, going to hospital is a sin. How can you say that God heals and you still go to hospital? Did you hear that kind of thing? And some people believe it and stop going to hospital. In fact, a woman died recently in labor because they told her not to go to hospital. That is a sin. Believe God. Have faith. Please. Is hospital a sin? But a church like Dominion City is a balanced church. We discuss deliverance. We discuss salvation. We discuss holiness. We discuss sanctification. We discuss divine judgment. Everything is complete in whole. So what are you looking for? Somewhere else. I'm only asking a question. No? I didn't slap you. Paul said you may have many instructors. But I have begotten you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore be ye followers of me. No matter how, what you hear elsewhere. Follow me. I am your father in the Lord. Somebody shout amen two times. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says this. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says this. The good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So any man who is a father has inheritance to give. And I will encourage you to remain in the father's house. Don't run away so that you can have your inheritance. Anytime your father looks for you and you're no more there. Inheritance is given to those who are still available in the house. And I pray that God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there are a few examples of fatherhood in the Bible. I won't have the time to explore them. I'll just mention them and pass away. Number one is Moses and Joshua. We saw that in the book of Exodus 3, verse 10. Moses and Joshua. The Bible says in Exodus 3, verse 10, put it on the screen. Exodus 3, verse 10. That's what the Bible said. Listen, follow this. Follow this. Very important. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his own tent of door. The whole Israel, everybody in the house was just like this. But follow, go, go to the next one now. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. So as we are all in the church here, every one of you will come to camp meeting and worship. Some of you go to church. Any Sunday you feel like going to church. Some Sundays you feel tired, so you stay back home. So everyone can worship from his tent. And sorry, even today, people now worship on their phone. They will tell you we are worshiping online. Come to the church and worship. Uh, all right? Except you are sick. If you are healthy, come to the church and worship. So they all worship from their tents and from everywhere they were found. But then Moses was the man of God here. But nobody amongst them cared to come close to the man of God. To know what the man of God does and serve him directly. None of them cared except a young man by name Joshua. Say it in the Bible. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But, but, someone say but. Louder, but. But his servant Joshua, the son of moon, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. He was there 24 hours trying to understand the secrets of Moses. The next verse. And Moses said unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know. Whom thou wilt send with me, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. And Joshua was hearing all these things. Remember, Moses didn't call Joshua to come. Joshua came by himself. Did you follow what I say here at all? He never called him to come. He came by himself and attached himself to the man of God and followed him closely so that some of his grace can transfer on him. Now see what the Bible says about the young man. In chapter, the Torah chapter 1 verse 14. The Torah chapter 1 verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call therefore Joshua and present yourself in the tabernacle of the congregation that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, because he distinguished himself to serve the man of God, 
at the departure of the man of God, the Bible said he was separated by God. There was a transfer, a handover. See again, Numbers 27, verse 15. Numbers 27, verse 15. Numbers 27, verse 15. And Moses spoke unto the Lord, saying, The God of the Spirit of all flesh set a man over the congregation. Go down. Which may go out before them, which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua. Who said that? Who said that? Why? He distinguished himself to follow, to honor, and to learn. So God says, Take you. How many of you know that Pastor Deboye was not, the, was not even among the ESCO members of Redeem? Do you know that? But he distinguished himself by service and honor. That when the man was about to die, God said to him, Pastor Deboye will replace you. He came from the back and overtook others. In life, overtaking is allowed. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now hear me. In your local church, wherever you are worshiping, in the branches you came from, stay very close to your pastor, your pastor's wife. Always find out what they need. Honor them. Honor your father and your mother. Among all the spiritual, all the fathers I've mentioned, after God Almighty, the second in the rank is a spiritual father. Because your physical father will only give you physical property. Only spiritual father can give you a spiritual property. Is somebody here I want to say here? I went to somewhere to do a crusade. And somebody served me so much, a woman. She served me so much. She served me until I added 5 kg in my weight. She served me so much when I left that community. Some two weeks later, the woman called me on phone and said, I'm so, they said, I am discovered and, and that I recognized with a cancer of the throat. When I had that, my, mo my memories remembered all the service she offered. I said, no way. Woman, return back to the same hospital. Cancer is a stranger. She returned back again and called the following day and said, no cancer anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Men and brethren, if you, if you, anywhere you have, anywhere you came from, I don't know the church you came from, because sometimes we are in a generation that it looks like people's mind are being disabused against the church. When you go back to your church, stay so close to your local pastor. As you serve him, you are serving God in this dimension. May God give you the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. A few minutes more to leave you. Now, I will jump others and say just one more because of time. There was a young man called Abraham. Abraham lived his life as a great man of God, as a father. By the time he was dying, he was both a physical father and a spiritual father to the young man they called Isaac. Abraham, the Bible said, in the book of Genesis 25 from verse 5 to 6, that when Abraham was about to die, something happened. He called his son, please hear me now, because I'm going to the end of this message. Hear me now. I pray for you. Say I receive. You will not leave this camp in T handed. Every prophecy from P will happen in your life. These things are no jokes. They are reality. How many of you know that your spiritual father's prophecy can rearrange your life and destiny? Do you know that? Just a word, not two words. One word. One word can rearrange. Hear me. It was a word from the mouth of Samuel that redefined the life of Saul. As you are living here now, you will meet a man. He will give you a, some bread, collect from his hands. As you move further, you will see some men moving, prophesying, join them, and prophesy along, and you will be turned into another man. That is just all. By ordinary pouring of oil, Saul, the confused man, became Saul, the captain of Israel. One day again, he entered the house of a man, David, and just poured oil upon David. That's all. He became a king overnight. Hello? That's all. That's all. And that, and that day, the man Elijah went to the house of a man called Elijah and threw a mantle on him. That's all. Elijah became, he left whatever he was doing and followed him. At the end of the day, he became Elijah, the great man of God. One, one word from your spiritual father that you have served so well can bring grace upon your life. Now follow me.
The man they call Abraham at the point he wanted to die. I need three, two, three young men here. Three young men. Please run. Just three young men. Because of time. Can I have a lapa? A lapa. Something like a lapa or a pa or anyone you call it. Come, bring it. Thank you. Watch this. Shout Amen. I am Abraham. Call me Abraham, everybody. Who among you is, more, is the most handsome? Please help me and choose. Huh? All of them. <laughs> so let me begin from the first person I met over here. So I call him Isaac. Call him Isaac, everybody. And this one is called Ishmael. Eh? Only for now. You're not Ishmael. Only for now. This one is Keturah. The first son of Keturah. The wife of Abraham that he married after the death of Sarah. You remember that? Now when Abraham was about to die, Isaac had distinguished himself by purpose, knowledge, and service. That he was going to be, and also a divine destiny. He's going to take over from the man Abraham. At the point Abraham was about to die, the Bible says here, look at the scriptures. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubine which Abraham had. Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from his son, Isaac, while he yet lived. His word, the east country. Now see what happened. Abraham, um, Abraham gave gifts. He shared his physical properties. All his iPads, his laptops, his estates, all his lands, all his landed property, all the houses he built, all the cow and gold and cowries and silver and diamond. He gave them to Isaac. This is a bunch of diamond. Eh? All the diamond they have go and become rich. And then he turned to the one, what's your name now? No, your name in the Bible. Keturah's son has no name. He gave him a gold and all the gold and all the documents of the properties. And the Bible said he sent them away from Isaac. And he gave to Isaac all that he had. What do you think Abraham had? God said to him, come out from your father's house, from your kindred, from your people. And I will bless you and make you a blessing. And through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So something was given to Abraham beyond the physical. That was what made Abraham, Abraham. So Abraham handed over all that he had unto who? And sent these ones away so that he can enjoy the blessing. Now follow this. 26 verse 1. The Bible said, and there was famine where? In the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines, unto Gera. Now answer me. If Abraham gave, you know, Abraham was rich in cattle, rich in gold, rich in diamond. If he gave his wealth to Isaac, would he be feeling the famine? In 25th uh, chapter, the Bible said he gave all to him. It means he didn't give him physical things. He gave him something that eyes cannot see that produces physical things. But he gave this one physical things and sent them away. They never enjoyed. They went home and prospered for a season and for a period. For this one, famine came. He discovered he had nothing in his hands. Are we together here at all? Then he went down to, to Abimelech. Verse 2. Verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, go, down to, go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land, I shall tell thee of. The next verse. And so John in the land, I will be with thee. And I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all this country. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham, who? Thy father. Can I ask you a question? If the God of your father appears to you tonight in a dream, what will be the name? I'm asking a question. If your father's God appears in your dream tonight, 
and introduce himself to you, what will be the name? Trust me, the name will frighten you. The name, with, if your own biological father, his name is Okonkwa, or Koye, if he appear, if his God appears to you in the night, tonight in a dream, what do you think that will be the name? Arobinago. Uguwabo. Or one thing or the other. But for this young man called Isaac, his father didn't just give him wealth. His father gave him his God. And the Bible said that the God of his father appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. In this land, I will. If you go home, read it to the end. I don't have the time. The Bible says in that same year, Isaac planted in that land in the same year of famine and he prospered and went on to prosper until he became very prosperous. Bible was Bible was say no, I will come bolo no to a farmer. I will go bolo ogi sogi se, I will do ku. Gani ri do ku. Lose em bo do ku in keuku. And the Philistines invaded him. He prospered in the land. Because of what the father gave him. Now follow me. 27. Stand up. Don't bother about going. Give my iPad back. <laughs> because he's a physical thing. But this one is not physical. Alright, 27 now. It came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his oldest son and said unto him, My son, he said unto him, Behold, here. Ramai, goodness verse. This time around, Esau, I mean, um, Isaac is about to die. So what the father gave him, he must hand over. Are you following what I'm saying here? He has to hand over. And so he called his, his son, Esau, and said, Esau, take your bowl. Go to the forest. Kill a game. Bring the meat. Let me eat and bless you. Question. Why would a father require meat from the son to bless the son? Why won't the father just bless his son? Why will he ask him? Why will he give him the task of bringing meat? Sir, are you that crazy about meat? That you have to send your son to the forest to go and kill a meat and bring it before you could bless him? No. One of the platforms that automatically transfers or usurps the grace or the transfer of grace is called platform of honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? For thou shalt honor your father and your mother that your days may be. Israelite said to David, you are 1,000 of us. You are the light of Israel. That's what you have said to him. If you go, we are finished. Your life is our life. Because your life and destiny is connected to your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If you are here, you have lost your father early, but let's go father early. You will know that if your father died early, you are in trouble, especially if you're a girl. And the husband comes to marry you. And uncle so will gather. Uh, um, uh, um, um, um. Your, if your husband will suffer. But even if your father is sick and alive, lying down on a mat, he will say what will happen in his family. For the father, a sick father is better than a dead father. Is somebody here what I'm saying here? Now, the Bible says, because my time is almost or five minutes more, this man is Isaac now about to hand over. He sent, come, come, Esau to go to the forest and kill so that he can bless his son. What do you mean, sir? To bless your son, he must go and kill. You go to any extent to pay your spiritual father. As long as you trust him. That's why you don't follow any man you see. As your father. You follow a man tested. And the man God has planted you under by himself. You must find out that the man has integrity. Productivity. Sincerity. And at the same time, that man has longevity. He has been in the ministry for a long time. He has integrity that is impeccable. He has sincerity to share his own testimonies. And at the same time, he has a product to show for his labor. And Pastor David Obueli has it all. He has it all. He is not here now, so I can say it openly. 
if he's here, maybe I'll be, I will say I'm flattering him. I have been close to him a little bit. The man has contagious presence. If you stay close to him, talking with him, you see yourself break, break down. You just see yourself melt. He carries presence. He carries a level of grace, a level of aura that, talk, that changes a wicked mind to a righteous man. A, an impeccable integrity. Productivity and one day he called me and said, he mentioned somebody's name and said, inquire of him. I had his blind. Let's go and open his eyes. I said, P, what did you say? He said, I should inquire of the man, one big man, that the man, he had the man is blind. That I should inquire so we can go and open the eyes. I said in my heart, I will not go with you. <laughs> he will get alone. But I inquired though, and I told him, sir, when you come back, I know he's not, he doesn't have the chance. But that kind of God to go and open the man's eyes. Do you understand that at all? For me, if you come to my crusade, I pray, the cripple walk, the blind see. But I don't, if you don't walk, you go home, I didn't make you cripple. <laughs> see me. <laughs> ah, see me they, they bring you with wheat here. I will pray if you walk, we we'll celebrate. If you don't walk, carry your wheat here, go back. I was not the way you got crippled. I didn't even know how it started. <laughs> Hello? So this, this is Esau. I mean, um, Isaac. And he's about to go. Sir, this guy went to the forest. Hear me? Because he lacks honor, commitment, and sincerity. He made the mistake. He flouted all the first orders given to him by his parents. The first order given to him was, don't marry from among the Hittites. The first mistake he made was to marry from the Hittites. That means the wife you married can distort, disorganize, and destroy your destiny. And disobedience to your spiritual father can mess you up also. In the church I pastor, nobody dies prematurely in my church. Not even a single person. Since I began to pastor, you can't die prematurely. But there are few who die prematurely. About two or so. One of them, I went to pray for him, for her to rise. As I was praying for her to rise, I saw heat. I was praying, oh Lord, he must come back to life. Somebody, after praying for one hour, and heat, heat, heavy heat, was coming out from my body. The guy that went with me called me and said, come daddy, I came out. He said, stop praying for this woman, let's go. If the woman wakes up from the dead and see that you are the one who prayed for her to rise, she will die again. She hurts you with passion, let's go. <laughs> are you following her at all? <laughs> And we prayed and prayed. She didn't come back to life and we left. So anytime, sometimes, that things go wrong, most times we didn't follow instruction. Are you following what I'm saying here? That was the issue with, uh, what's your name? <laughs> Esau. He married a Hittite from the people who were living, who were not circumcised. But his brother Jacob was a cultivator, a decent man, a man of fellowship. A man of the tent. Always like Mary, sitting down to learn from the mother, from the father, and willing to obey and to honor. Always around the father. Always around the mother. But this one, always in the forest, pursuing Nti. Not him more. Now by the time he went out to get the animal, the mother had it. Women sometimes are more sensitive. The woman know that this guy, if, he, if that thing is landed, if that thing is given to him, he will mess it up. Even with the wife he married, it will sink in his hands. The wife said, the mother said, no, this guy is infidel, a fornicator, a wicked man. He can't carry this destiny. When he left, the mother said, Isaac, Jacob, eh, run fast, get some meat. Let me get it ready for you. And the guy did it quickly. He carried it to his father. And the father said, you know the whole story now? Is that Esau? Yes, yeah, I am Esau. That's where the mistake came. So the blessing came. I couldn't land very well on him. That was why he was crying again. I'll never let you go unless you bless me. That was when the blessing finally landed. Amen. <laughs> so let's not go into that one. So he brought me and the father said, I bless you. And he blessed him. When this one now came, what did the father say? There is no more. And this guy cried and said, is it only one blessing you have? The father said, I've given it to him. You will serve him. If you struggle so much, you break free from his slavery, but you will still serve him. Hey, one word from a man rearranged destinies. 
Do you know that the man they call Noah laid a curse on Ham? Do you know that? Say, Ham, you are finished. One word. He placed Shem and Japheth above Ham, who was more resilient and stronger than them. Do you know that that singular word, that word he said, that Canaan, your son, will be a servant of servant. That was why God called Abraham the son of Shem and took him to the land of Canaan and changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which is Abram. Abraham swallow Ham, and Ham disappear in Abraham. And by that singular word, he placed them ahead. One word, one word, disappeared Ham. What about Isaac, the man they call Abraham, I mean, I'm Elisha? Elisha said, if you see me go, you have the blessing. Is in your Bible? As he was going, if you go home, read it today. Go back home and read. That's second Samuel chapter 2. You will see that when they were going, the man said to him, stand here while I move up. The man said, I will never let you go. Anywhere you go, that's where I'm going. He followed him. As they moved up a little bit, they met 50 prophets. You remember that? And the 50 prophets said to him, your master will be taken away today. What does he mean? The 50 prophets opened their own small, small business shop. They call ministry. Elijah followed Elijah as a fool. Isn't it? Pouring water in his hands. For only, how long? Only God knows. But the other 50 opened their shops and call it Inter-Glorious Ministry International. They became GSs. Founders of churches. Hello. But this guy, Elijah, closed his Elijah Agricultural Business PLC and submitted himself to Elijah and honored Elijah only pouring water. What a mighty man coming so low to pour water. Hey! But when the time came, the man said, if you see me go, you will have it. And when the time came, the chariot separated them. He shouted, my father, my father, the horsemen of Israel and the chariot, they are off. And the man took him. He tore the old one and put on the new one. And then he moved. The fifth, you are watching him when he got to the river. He struck the river. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? He became times two of Elijah. And those men say, it's like Elijah's spirit has come upon him. From that day on, no man or another man. Hear me finally. What you labor to have for 50 years, one word, prophetic word from your spiritual father will give it to you in one day. Do you hear what I said? Do you hear what I said? And all those who rebelled. So if you are in the choir, honor your pastor. Honor your minute. Honor. Do the best you can in the choir. Do it as a fool. As a season for your manifestation. Don't break that season. Don't break the circle. Complete the circle. When the circle is completed, you will rise. But if you live too early, you, you will live empty handed. You will get standing on the road. I will dismiss you because of my time. You can go back to your seats. Shout amen. So I want to encourage you to do the best you can to remain where you are, be planted in the house, be a son in the house. Don't be a visitor in your own very house. Number two, honor your father. Honor is not just thing of mouth. Honor flows from from within and it also has to involve your money. It involves what? Your money. When you support a man's work, that is the best way to honor the man. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Don't wait for your father to cry. Only children demand from their father. Sons give to their father. If you come home and see that your father's house is leaking, what will you do? Wait for to be told to, to repair it? You do that work. Men and brethren, I think it's a night of increase, a night of release in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet, everyone.